Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my very first experience of going hot air ballooning in Phoenix, Arizona with Rainbow Riders. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, we went hot air ballooning for the first time for my sister's bachelorette. <laughs> Now we were in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we booked the hot air balloon ride with Rainbow Riders, which is in Phoenix, Arizona. So there was about seven of us, and it was our first time doing hot air ballooning, and we all had it on our life's bucket list. So we definitely wanted to do it in Phoenix because they have great views and great atmosphere from when we saw the pictures online on Google. So I will say that I am afraid of heights and I do get nervous when I'm up above, if I'm on the edge of something and in a tall building, I'm on the roof or something, if I'm walking on a bridge, I do get nervous. And the crazy thing was, when we were up above in the sky, I mean, initially I was scared, but when we were at full maximum, I think we were at 7,500 feet, when we were up that high, I wasn't scared at all. And you're in this actual woven basket with a balloon attached to it and nothing else. So here's how it started off. When you do hot air ballooning, you need to wake up really, really early. They need to do it very early in the day so that it's not too windy and it's safe for you guys. So we had to be in Phoenix at 5.15 in the morning. So there were seven of us to get ready. So we all woke up starting from 3 a.m. We had to take an Uber from Scottsdale to Phoenix. So when you get there, they have you fill out a bunch of forms. They have in this particular location, they had like a really nice lobby area and they offer you breakfast, but you don't actually get to eat it before you go on the hot air balloon ride. You get to eat it after. So you fill out your forms, you're waiting for everything, and then they take you in a van. They separate you into the baskets. Now there were seven of us in our group, but we actually had like seven more people. So there was like 13 or 14 people in our basket, which I thought was really amazing that that many people could go in one basket. And we even saw even larger baskets. Our guide was telling us that he pointed to one and said that was like a 60 person basket. So it's amazing how many people you can fit in these things. So it didn't take too long to get to the site. It was about maybe like a 10, 15 minute drive, maybe less. And then they go right away and they set up the whole hot air balloon thing. So they're getting the balloon out, getting the basket, and there's a bunch of them. They're moving as fast as they can. And then you can actually participate as well. You can hold the the hot air balloon while they're blowing the fire and the air into it. So it does take them a good chunk of time to set it up, but when they do, the balloon is actually like levitating the basket. So you need to get into it while it's kind of already moving. So one of the other people, they got little a little step ladder. It's like maybe two or three steps and you do need to get into the basket yourself like no one's gonna really help you get into it like give you a little boost so it wasn't really too difficult to get into the basket if you've got you know normal mobility in your legs sorry about that just had to move the camera because there was a lot of shadow action there's this tree here and it was creating this weird pattern effect on my face so once we got all in the guy just, you know, ignites it with the fire and you just fly up into the air. It was initially scary at first, but it's actually really calming because the basket doesn't like sway like you think it would. It kind of, it's kind of like you're just stationary. There wasn't any like, you know, like on a plane, you can feel when the plane moves and it, it tilts. In the hot air balloon basket, it just kind of just goes up. And what's cool was we were a little bit in a like a desert area and you could see like the, you know, the trees and the sand and you could see animals running through. So we were up there for a good chunk of time and our guide was amazing. He was very knowledgeable. He made us feel very safe because, you know, you are in this basket attached to a balloon without any like parachutes or anything. He made us feel great. We had a good time. We were all laughing. 
who's telling us funny stories. Now, I will say that if you, it says that if you are taller than six feet, you're going to feel some heat. So if you stand next to the guide, that's where he has like the burners and the fire. Every so often, he has to put the fire on to make the balloon go higher and just like tilt it and move it and stuff. I was standing on the complete other side, so it was a little bit warm, but you couldn't feel it as much. But I could imagine if you are taller, I'm only 5'3", if you are taller and you are standing on that side, you will probably feel the heat. So maybe don't stand so close to the burners. All right, so when we were landing, he was explaining the whole procedure of how it's actually going to happen. So the balloon just descends, but it has possibility that it's going to be tilting over and you actually have to hold on to these ropes, but hold on into the opposite direction of how the basket is going to land. So because the basket was landing like this, we had to face this way and then hold these ropes and lean backwards. And at this point, I had to put my GoPro away and I couldn't have any cell phones or cameras or film it be for safety issues because when we did land, the basket does bounce. So, so we were coming down at an angle and the basket like totally tilted like that. It was almost like we were on a roller coaster. We were all screaming. It was actually a lot of fun because it did feel like an amusement park ride. We bounced about two or three times and then the Rainbow Riders crew that were on the ground following us, they came and they jumped on the basket and pulled it down so that the basket would stop bouncing around. That was pretty much the only crazy part of the whole hot air ballooning. Everything else was really calm and enjoyable. So you might think that the story ends there, but actually when you get out of the basket, they do a little champagne mimosa toast. So they ha actually have some champagne and a glass, a champagne glass for you to keep. So he poured some champagne, poured some orange juice. It actually tasted really good. And he said sort of like a uh, traditional hot air balloon prayer that they used to say back then and then you all toast because you made it on the ground safely so I thought that was a really nice touch I thought that was really cool I was not expecting that and we were all just you know hanging out like drinking the champagne while they are cleaning up and doing the hard work then when we got back we ate breakfast and they, they had like a full continental breakfast with bagels toast jams cream cheeses croissants, fruits, orange juices. You could have more champagne if you wanted. And overall, they went above and beyond. Customer service was really good and they have very good attention to detail when it comes to giving a customer experience. So in my opinion, if you have a chance to take Rainbow Riders in Phoenix, Arizona, I highly suggest them. Hot air ballooning for the first time, even though you're afraid of heights, is fine. The basket doesn't sway, and in our experience, it didn't. I'm, I'm afraid of heights, and I wasn't scared at all. And it's definitely one of those bucket list items that you need to do. All right, guys, well, that is it for this video. That was my experience of hot air ballooning for the first time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Back from the dead.